Hello! This week we are in Excel Module 2, um, learning how to format our charts and our worksheets. This week a lot of what we do is similar to what we did last week, however we will be adding some conditional formatting and uh, making a few changes like that. So I've already downloaded my instructions. So now let's go and download the Excel spreadsheet from Blackboard. And the first thing we need to do is enable our editing so that we can make changes to it. The next thing we do need to do is save it. So I'm going to go to File, Save As. I'm just going to save mine on my desktop so that I can find it later. You just need to be consistent about where you're going to be saving it at. And then I'm going to get rid of this one and add my last name and save. So for this project, we are Jaden Keller and we manage a um, lawn and garden store. And we have an Excel spreadsheet to try to solve a problem of one of our stores that has too much or too little stock on hand. So we're going to format format a workbook to help us with our inventory. And this is something real similar to what a lot of big box stores like Target and Walmart do as well, only on a much larger basis. So we are going to go to our inventory worksheet. So down here at the bottom we have our documentation and we have inventory. We're going to go to the inventory worksheet. You can see it here. And the first thing we need to do is we want to make our A1 heading for style. So we're going to make A1 our active cell. And up here in our styles, we have cell styles. And we're going to change this to heading for. And then it wants us to merge and center a1 to F1. So we're going to make click on A1, drag down to F1, so we have that range selected, and then we're going to come up here and we're going to merge and center. We're going to use Auto Fit to resize column A. So remember, um, we want to make sure that this is all, we can read all of our text. So we're going to take our mouse but between A and B until it changes shape and then double click. And it's going to make, for mine, it just changes it a little bit. Yours might be a little bit more. Now we're going to go to A3 to F3. So we need to select the range A3 to F3. So I'm going to click in A3. Then I'm going to hold down with my left mouse key and drag over to F3 to select that range, A3 to F3. And we want to shade it green accent one, lighter 60%. So to make sure it stays selected. Then up here in our fonts, we have our shading, our fill color. So we're coming here, we're going to go to green accent one, and we're going to go lighter 60%. We just want to make sure that stands out a little bit from the rest of our worksheet. So we can you use our format painter. We like the way this is green, white, green, white here, and we want to make 13 with the green as well. So we're going to highlight A11 through F11 to select that range. And we're going to come up to our format painter up here on our home tab, select that. And now we're going to select a 13 to F13. Make sure you don't select the whole row. Uh, if you select the number, then you're going to be selecting the entire row. And we don't want that. You want just A13 to F13 to be highlighted there. We want to make our plant names stand out from the rest of our data, so we need to italicize them. So going clear back to Word, we're going to highlight a4 to A14, and we're going to come up here to the italics and just select that, just like we did when we were working in Word. We want to apply an outside border to the cells in the range A3 to F14, 
to make them kind of stand out together. So the first thing we have to do is select our range, A3, and then go down to F14. And then we're going to come up here in the font section, we have our borders. So we're going to click on this little arrow, and we want to select outside borders. We just want the default, so we can just click on that one right there to have our default border. Now in G1 to H1, we have our markup. That's how much we're going to be marking up everything. And we just kind of want to de-emphasize that a little bit. So we want to make our text just a little bit lighter. So up here in the font grouping, we have our font color. And we're going to change that to black text 1, lighter 35%. Just to make this a little bit lighter. Now our price paid amounts over here, you can see 10.5, 15.1. We want to make those look like um, like numbers. We want to put um, the comma format in two decimal places. So first we have to select it before to B14. And up here in our number grouping, we've got this comma. There's a comma style. We're going to select that. And if for some reason yours does not have two decimal points here, then right up here we have our increase decimal and decrease decimal. So each time you click on one of those, it's going to either increase or decrease your number of decimals. So just want to make sure that this has two decimal places highlighted with it. And F4 to F14, so we're going to F4 to F14. Um, we want the accounting format because we want to put the dollar sign so people know that it's dollars. So we're going to appear to the dollar sign. That's the accounting number format. Select that. And it should automatically put into decimal places as well as the dollar sign under each one. Now one thing that we can do that's really kind of cool in Excel is we can do what's called conditional formatting. And conditional formatting is up here on the um, home tab and it's a way that you can easily spot trends or um, patterns in the data with colors, uh, with bars, uh, color, changing the font color, changing your, your shading on your document. Um, we can add different icons, just ways that we can look at it real easily. Now for this particular one, we want to look at our on-hand values, D4 to D14. So we're going to select that whole range, D4 to D14. And what we want to do is we want to know if we have less than 15 of something. If we have less than 15, then we know we need to order it. And we want a way to make that stand out so that we can see that just at a glance. So to do that, like I said, we're going to select that range, and then we're going to come up here to the conditional formatting. And you can see we've got lots of different tools that we could choose from. But we want to do the highlight cells rules, and we're going to go less than. And because we want to highlight anything that's less than 15, so we're going to put 15 in that first one. And then right here, we can change and we can tell it what color. Or we can, in the custom format, we can even make up our own. Maybe we want a purple with blue background or something. We want for our sheet here, the yellow fill with dark yellow text. So we're going to click that. And what's going to happen is that anything, any of the cells that's less than 15 are going to be yellow filled with the dark yellow text. So you can see just at a glance that those are the five items that we need to order. Now, we not only want to, to uh, highlight the cells, but we want to use an icon set. We want to use the arrows to show whether it's up higher than 15, lower than 15, or at 15. So we're going to highlight, make sure you got that range highlighted again, F4 to F, or D4 to D14. Up here in the conditional formatting, going to go to the icon sets and we want the directional icon sets. And what that's going to do is it's going to automatically put those arrows in there. So um, you can see if it's 15 to 20, it's going to be going even. If it's over, here's 25, it's higher. I don't know why that 20 is. Less than 15. Okay. Oh, I 
messed it up completely, didn't I? Let me just go back. At 20, it's going to, I guess it goes by, by fives. At 20 or low, 20 to 15, it's going to show that it's even. Anything higher than 20, you're going to have your upper arrow. And then anything lower, you're going to have the down arrow. So you can see right away, these are the things that we need to order. So now we're going to come up here and make A1 our active cell because we want to look at our spelling. So we're going to go up here to the review tab and then spelling. And you can see this first one, it's vowel. That's not right. We want value, V-A-L-U-E. We're going to say change and we're good to go. So now we're going to save it and then submit it in Blackboard for grading.